And so having to hold in your pee from 7.30 or 8 a.m. until 11 a.m., you really need to make sure that you use the bathroom before you're seated in the test center. What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you would know that I took the LSAT last weekend now and scores literally come out tomorrow, which is sort of making me nervous. But if you are new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I'm a senior at UC Berkeley, double majoring in cognitive science and legal studies, and I just took the LSAT. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about my entire LSAT experience from start to finish. I also have some LSAT related videos that I will have in a playlist linked down below if you want to check those out. Starting from the beginning of the LSAT process, in the summer I have some videos in the playlist of me studying for the LSAT and then registering for the LSAT. So registering for the LSAT, you typically have to register a month or two in advance and it does cost $200 to take this test, which I think is quite expensive expensive to sit in a room for five or six hours to take a standardized test, but $200 is the admission fee and then you can always see if you can get it waived or like partially waived based on different circumstances. And if you are looking to register for the LSAT, you should check online the different A, test locations, and then B, test times, and then C, when you have to register for the upcoming LSAT. And so registration, you typically have to register a month in advance before the next LSAT and each LSAT typically happens or is offered once a month. And so I took or was was supposed to take the September LSAT. The October LSAT is happening soon and then for the November LSAT you have to register by October 14th. So I think like in two days from when I'm filming this. These tests are not offered that often, a few times a year. <laughs> if you are interested in applying for law school or taking the LSAT, you really have to plan on when you are taking these tests. But if you wanted to apply while you're a senior in college and then start the year after and not take a gap year, people will take the July LSAT or the September LSAT. For me, taking the September LSAT, I was studying throughout the summer. That's literally all I did in the summer and then in the start of the school year, August, I was just studying while taking classes. And so this was a little bit difficult because you're a full-time student while also studying for this high stakes exam. It was very time consuming. I would wake up at seven every day for the first three, four weeks of classes and study for the LSAT in the morning because because that was when it was quiet, no one was awake yet, I could really focus on the LSAT studying. Once there's like background noise or people talking at the libraries and whatnot, like I could not freaking focus on the LSAT. And so that part was a little bit difficult because you are trying to balance school, LSAT studying, and I have jobs on campus, so like I did not have a lot of free time. So that's something to think about if you are going to take the LSAT within a semester, so like anytime school is in session. So basically, I was supposed to to take the LSAT on September 21st and I have a video on this channel of my LSAT getting cancelled. <laughs> Literally that's what happened. On the 20th, the Friday before my exam was supposed to happen on the 21st, we got an email saying that the test was cancelled because the test center did not have enough tablets. So recently in the summer, the July test was the last LSAT that was going to be paper and pencil version, and now they're switching solely to an online version of the test. If I had taken it on a tablet, they would provide tablets at the test center and also styluses, but because my LSAT was canceled and then rescheduled, we actually had to take a pen and paper version, which I guess we'll see how it goes. On one hand, I was like, okay, this might be good because I did a lot of my studying on the paper and pencil version, versus the other hand, the tablets, they do self-timers. You can easily click the answers. You don't need to scribble in on a Scantron the bubbles for the answers, but basically they canceled the LSAT. Everyone at like the 10 test centers were like WTF, since when can a large organization like the LSAC cancel a freaking exam less than 24 hours the test is supposed to happen so that was a little bit mind-boggling because imagine if you're taking the SAT, ACT, GRE, or even MCAT and it gets canceled the day before. That like freaking ruins your psyche. It ruined my mental state. I was finally ready, prepared, and then it got canceled and then we didn't even know when it was going to be rescheduled for because the email just said it will happen sometime in the next two weeks. And I heard that someone called and they said that they could give us 24 hours notice before we were supposed to go 
go in and take the test. Thank God that didn't happen. So on Saturday, the 28th of September, one week after we were supposed to take the LSATs, we got an email saying that the LSAT would be happening the week after, so on October 5th. So this is two weeks after the LSAT was supposed to happen, and then we get one week's notice. Having it canceled, I was just low-key over the whole thing because it was supposed to happen, it didn't happen, and then it sort of threw my schedule into whack because I wasn't planning to take the LSAT on that Saturday two weeks after, and then I had two exams the Monday after the October 5th LSAT, and so I was just very, very busy and stressed because of this cancellation. So moving into day of the test, here I'm going to talk about all of the little nitty gritty details in the vlogs that I've posted on this channel. It's a little bit more vlog style and not into depth about what happened the day of the LSAT, but here I'm going to walk through the process. The day before the LSAT, I got all of my materials ready, so you have to have a gallon Ziploc bag, you're only allowed to bring a 20 fluid ounce water bottle, and it has to be in a plastic container, no cans, all of that. And so all of this information is emailed to you, and it's on the LSAC website, and so you need to prepare all of your materials probably the night before, two nights before, so you have everything like your pencils, snacks, everything like that. You need a driver's license, some form of identification, and you need to print out your LSAC admissions ticket. It's basically to let you to get into the test, you need the ticket and then you want to bring your little baggie of supplies. And so I started getting that stuff prepared a few days in advance before my Saturday LSAT. And that's helpful because it's a lot less stressful than trying to do everything the morning of, so that's probably not good. So morning of the LSAT, the LSAT does not let you bring any kind of electronics into the testing center, so no cell phone at all. It's not even like, okay, I can bring a cell phone and they have boxes where we store them and then like no one has access to them kind of thing, but like you can literally not even have a cell phone on you because there is no storage place for them. You will get kicked out of the LSAT by having a phone with you or any kind of electronics. On the website, there is a long list of things that you can bring and things that you cannot bring. So no cell phone. I had to walk about a mile to the test center. I purposefully picked this test center because it was like a mile away from Berkeley, I knew that I could walk there. If I picked a further away test center, being at college with no car, it would have been a little bit harder to like Uber there without a phone or like, I don't know, that just seems very difficult. So like you need to pick a test center that is in a prime location that you can get to without technology. Maybe a family or friend can drive you there. So the morning of, I woke up around like 6.45 a.m. or so, and then I wanted to leave my room around 7 40 a.m and then it took about like 20 minutes to walk there even though the test center doors didn't close until 8 30 a.m you want to get there early just in case something happens like you trip and fall you get lost you don't want to plan your time so that you cut it so close then you miss the lsat because they've already locked the doors and started the students for me it started at 8 30 on a saturday that's when you needed to be there and in your seat and so i wanted to arrive between 8 a.m and 8 8, 10 a.m. so I'd have time to like sit down and relax <laughs> before the LSAT was supposed to happen and so I think that's a good idea it's just stressful if you cut it so close with time a few weeks prior to the LSAT happening I was fixing my sleep schedule because 8 a.m. as a college student to start taking a high stakes test is pretty early considering I don't have any 8 a.m.s this semester in college a few weeks prior I would start waking up at 7 a.m. and then doing LSAT prep to get my mind mentally ready to take a high stakes exam starting at 8 30 a.m. on a freaking Saturday. I think that was helpful because it really woke me up in the morning and then my mind was ready to sit and literally sit for five hours to take the LSAT. So the day of I walked to the test center and then I go in and basically they made us sit in an atrium for a few minutes before they would allow us to go up the elevator upstairs into the testing center. When you go into your testing room you are not allowed to leave and go to the the bathroom until the test starts. So like I said, I got there around 8 a.m. That means when they let us into the test room around like 8.15 after waiting in the atrium, once you sit in your seat and they give you a seat number, you are not allowed to leave. So you need to go to the bathroom before you leave your house that morning and before they sit you in a seat in the testing room. The test doesn't even start at 8.30 because you have to fill out like all of these forms and sign documents. They have to check IDs and everything again 
10 so the test doesn't even start until like 9 a.m and then you have to do three 35 minute sections until the first 15 minute break our break literally wasn't until 11 a.m and so having to hold in your pee from 7 30 or 8 a.m until 11 a.m you really need to make sure that you use the bathroom before you're seated in the test center and then to get let into the testing rooms our testing rooms were split up by last names so i went to the last name that had l in it obviously i showed my driver's license and my admissions ticket to get in and they sort of check your name and photo with those and then they check your name on their roster list that they have thank god i took it at a community college so like it was lecture style seatings which is good versus other people like the person I was sitting next to said that they took their LSAT the first time in a hotel lobby kind of thing they were saying that it was just really bad because there's a lot of residual noise from the lobby of the hotel people were talking and so maybe that's something also to think about when you are picking your testing location and then the test actually starts yay the test actually went by a lot faster than like expected for being a test that has five sections that are 35 minutes each that's a long ass time and when I was studying like I could not focus for that long to do a whole practice test in one sitting but once you're sitting there the adrenaline is going make sure you breathe I was doing like breathing because you don't want to be too nervous because that's not good for performance so you do three 35 minute sections in the first and then you do a 15 minute break and then you do the final two sections and then you're freaking done and then you have to do the writing section online at home sometimes Time within the year it went by fairly quickly for like what it is I was home by like 1 30 p.m. so four or five hours and you're done it was a little bit hard in the test center because the proctors sort of kept whispering to one another and I was in the first row and so the proctors would like stand and then sometimes they would walk around to make sure no one was cheating or doing the wrong section kind of thing and so sometimes they would be whispering to each other which was hard to concentrate because there's not complete silence and you're like listening to them talking which was sort of annoying let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or comments or anything because I am done maybe I'll have to retake it if my score does not turn out that hot tomorrow hopefully not because taking the LSAT is very stressful studying for it is like hardcore but yeah thank you all so much for watching hopefully you all enjoyed make sure if you are interested to check out my LSAT playlist link down below and I will see you all next time with a brand new video.